Welcome to Metaphysical. I am your host, researcher Rob Counts, and with me, as always, is remote viewer John Vivanco. And uh, hey, John, this is part two of our uh, portals series that we're doing. Uh, we'll probably be doing a lot more episodes on this as we move forward. We can get into individual places, but the first episode, if you guys haven't seen it, definitely go back and watch. It was all about um, <clears throat> natural and unnatural portals, um, things that historically we can't explain, civilizations have built uh, that are just super fascinating and, and some experiences that actually you and I have had, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know, portals. I get, keep going back to this thing though. It's like, it's like, what the heck is a portal? I mean, what the, like really what the heck is a portal? It's like we see the, the output or we hear about the output more than like what it is <laughs> like, okay. So check this out. Right. This is going to be really, really, really f weird. F and weird. Um, and there's multiple witnesses on this to, to back me up. I had an experience number one with my son. Mm. So I was taking him to school one morning and there was literally in front of us on the side of the road, this little creature about three feet tall. It had little T-Rex arms and it was kind of hunched over and it started to go across the road right in front of us. So I like, there's a car in front of me. It's like, this is a, this is in the desert. The John, are you sure this wasn't his first grade teacher? Because you just described my first grade teacher to me. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, that was that, that, <laughs> dude. I don't know, man. So this thing actually, it waited till the car in front moved, and then it started to step into the road, and I slowed down because I'm going to hit it. And its its legs start moving so fast that it's it they blur out. You know, like the Road Runner yeah, cartoon. Sure. The legs blur blur out, and it shoots off down into this riverbed. Riverbed, and I'm like, what? What the? What the? Did what your the son what? see it? Yeah, he's like, what, 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 was what, what was that? What was that? And I said, I'm just like, okay, tell me exactly what you saw so I know I'm not hallucinating. <laughs> he told me. I mean, it was it. It looked like a chupacabra, right? Okay, so now check this out. I'm in the same area. We're driving home. I, had, I was at my sister's house. We were following. It was me, my son, my wife in the back seat. My parents were in a car in front of us. We were going back to their house, same location on the side of the road. There's this, it's like 12 feet tall, like big black creature with the longest, skinniest legs that were like 12 feet long before it hit mm -hmm. the body. It was like a Salvador Dali painting. If you've ever seen the elephants with the long legs, it looked like that, except the body was just like this long black torso. And this thing was about 12 feet tall, like eight feet long. And it was literally like, with its weird long legs stumbling around on the Sounds side of the like road. That, like that um, slender guy, slender man or whatever. Yeah, but it had four legs. It had four legs. It was like, oh, this might have been a skinwalker. I don't know what it was, man. Yeah. I so so we yeah, exactly. It looked like that, except it wasn't an elephant and it was black. Really? Yes. And so I saw it. My son saw it. My wife saw it. My mom saw it. My dad saw it. That's weird. I get back to their house and my mom, she's like, did you see that? Did you see that thing on the side of the road? And my, you know, my, my dad's like just trying to back away from it all. And she's all, he saw it. He saw it. I mean, <laughs> he never sees. I know now he knows these things are real because my mom and she's all into that kind of stuff. Right. So I was like, I was floored. Unbelievable. We remote viewed that. So we remote viewed all of this to try to understand what was going on right in that area. There's a portal, right? We get that back to the stupid like explanation of a portal, right? Like we see the output and, and everybody always just says it's a portal. Like right. where did they come from? It's a portal. Oh yeah. Thank God we know what it is now. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows what that is. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it's a portal. It's a lens to another world. that's like shifting and moving, right? Yeah. Bring up the definition of portal. That'll help. Door and entrance. That's getting us closer. It is it's a weird point. way to describe an entrance, right? Yeah. It's not an entrance. It's not just a door or entrance. It's a portal. It's a portal. <laughs> it's way cooler than a door or an entrance. Don't yeah. try to explain it with door or entrance. 
I know. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, actually, speaking of super weird stuff in this episode, we are, uh, you know, a lot of people have been wondering since Stranger Things came out, like what was Stra what technology was Stranger Things based on or, or where, where did the story even come from? And actually, what people don't know is that there were multiple different um, operations and or projects that led to the stories that Stranger Things was based off of. And in today's episode, um, you know, we are going to get into some of that today. And, and you know, strangely enough, in in uh, in Stranger Things, you know, there is this idea of a portal with the upside down and and opening up a door or a portal to uh, some other dimension where a potential or many potential nefarious beings exist. Um, and you know, I think it's Montauk Project is what the Stranger Things is based off of, but you can't really talk about Montauk Project until you talk about the Philadelphia Experiment, because that's sort of like that and the Manhattan Project and a few other things were all going on at the same time. And the Philadelphia Experiment was one of the weirdest projects from that period where I believe they were trying to um, cloak an entire ship. They were trying to create technology that would cloak a ship uh, where the enemy could not see the ship. And they were right. using um, electromagnetics uh, to try to achieve this, like radar sort of uh, electromagnetics and, um, and, and waves, sound waves and things. And, um, for, you know, from my understanding, the, the project was a, was a disaster. It was successful, but a successful disaster. <laughs> And what's meant by that is, you know, according to um, the stories that you can find yourself out there, they were successfully able to cloak or make an entire ship disappear. But when the ship reappeared, the small crew that was on the ship were basically melded into the ship entirely. Like they had kind of they had kind of merged with the ship. And so it had like, everybody just passed away, of course. And the ship was like, you know, like this very bizarre kind of like situation that occurred, that occurred from that. Um, yeah, we viewed that. We viewed yeah, and, that. And is yeah. that what you guys found when you, when you viewed it? So, yeah, I mean, crazily enough. Um, I mean, I would even use this as training, training objectives mm. on occasion. And for instance, I mean, one one time I, I gave it to uh, uh, some people in a class taking, you know, they don't know what they're viewing. They're just in training. And and this one person is literally describing uh, a man like 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 melded stuck yeah. combined with into the, ship. The, the floor of the ship and his his head sticking out. And she's like freaking out like the viewers freaking out. And and saying he's like they're stuck, he's stuck. And like I gave her feedback. She's like, what? She was mad. She was mad at me for tasking that. But that's what we get. That's what we get. Literally, whenever we view that, we we the viewers typically go to the highly emotional, physical, impacting element of 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 an objective. If it's sort of this broad, like Philadelphia experiment, and they describe that. So yeah, I mean, for, with remote viewing, it appears to have happened. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, and so this technology um, was then kind of like merged into what I think is known now as the Montauk Project. And the Montauk Project is actually a very strange and mysterious operation that occurred on the tip of, uh, of Montauk in, uh, in Long, uh, on Long Island. And um, what they did is... <clears throat> they realized that there were um, a lot of different technologies that they wanted to experiment. Uh, okay, this is word on the street, everyone. There's no way to confirm all of this, right? But that there were there were technologies that they could experiment with, and the strongest signal that they had at the time was a, was an old World War II radar that they could uh, transmit frequency from. And so they at specific frequencies they could they could do all kinds of different things. They could. Uh, interfere with um, with birds in the area, for instance, and then it and then it moved on to actually being able to kind of um, project th thoughts or things into people's minds, sort of like Voice of God technology, uh, like the 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 beginning of Voice of God technology stuff, where where they could do some of that, and and of course they they got spicier with this whole thing. They were like, well, if we can do that, let's 
let's hook the radar up to a psychic's head <laughs> and do experiments with remote viewing and transporting right. ourselves to different places. That's insane. I know. Yeah, exactly. And, and so they they actually there was one story that Preston Nichols, uh, the author of the book, The Montauk Project, that he that he uh, recounted where they realized that there was specific technology um, on Mars that they wanted more information about. So they decided to use the Tech at Montauk project to find more information out about it. And um, he ended up actually transporting himself. You know, the uh, the face on Mars? The, yeah. Remember the, what's that name? Cydonia. Of that? Yeah, Cydonia. Yep. Yeah. So they, they transported themselves underneath ground a, a certain amount of space underneath there to like find out more information. And it was, uh, it was a very bizarre story about how they were kind of using the technology to do different things. Now, if you talk to people in Montauk, everyone like lots of, okay, just so everybody knows, if you go to my TikTok page, probably one of my highest viewed videos is a video on the true story of stranger things where in three minutes i basically sum up everything that happened in the montauk project right up to the very end of the project it was the yeah, fastest, you did, didn't you? The fastest <laughs> i've ever talked in my life and people from montauk were messaging me really on tiktok yeah and they were like this is all true i've lived in the area my whole life oh, lots man. of weird things around here and like beasts were uh, wow. were washing up on shore in the Montauk yeah, yeah. area that there are pictures of. Uh, there was there was actually even um, discussion of like these children with black eyes and like it would take over people's minds in the area and like weird, very strange things were happening in that area. Now, of course, it's a it's a it's an old abandoned base now. You can go visit it and all of that stuff. But what really happened there is is kind of where where the juice is. And we can go into the the kind of final story of that. But John, yeah, like yeah, uh, what do I, you think about all that? I, well, there were two two incidents that happened with me regarding Montauk. Okay, this this was a long. This is like around the year two thousand. So the first thing that happened, one of the things that had has happened in the past is that. Um, as a remote viewing think tank, back then we were called transdimensional systems. As a remote viewing think tank, um, when remote viewing was new to the civilian world, really new and not a lot of people knew about it, <clears throat> the, um, we were being watched very, very closely by intelligence services. Um, and, and we would sometimes get in trouble for remote viewing classified stuff, like rem like, like literally we would task on something that was classified because we're trying to figure stuff out and we would get a warning. That's this happened like probably around three or four times. One of those, one of those was Montauk. So what, so. Okay. And John, just for everyone first at week. home, for everyone at home, remote viewing is gathering information right. that you, you wouldn't know with your five senses necessarily, exactly. or that you didn't experience personally. Right. So right. you're, you're right. gathering just, data from, who knows like the, the universe ether. yeah the ether really. yeah <laughs> the the fifth element um right. so we were yeah and it's developed by the cia um mm -hmm. and then declassified but not really it was pretend declassification right anyway we can get that another time so so running a remote viewing think tank getting paid you know full on thing that that we were doing we were also working with uh businesses multi-million dollar businesses as well as some intelligence uh services uh, but but off the books, completely off the books, uh, no paper right. trails. And so so and these were just literally requests. So but the first time, like I had been tasked, me and the team had been tasked as remote viewers on, you know, what was going on at Montauk. Right. So we remote viewed it. Um, there was weird stuff in the data of like a person separated from themselves, but in another timeline, looking at themselves within a room. And 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 the person, that one aspect of themselves was like tied up in a chair, right? And that's kind of like part of the mythology. And well, this uh, sounds even, like Preston's. It sounds like it. it's story. so. So some of the stuff like had verified what Preston was talking about that we got in data. But so I get the feedback. And, and I, and I literally tell my tasker, you have to publicly like retract. We can't like give this information out and you have to like somehow retract 
somehow write it on your computer, say it out loud in your home. I'm not sharing this with anyone, blah, 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 because we had gotten in trouble for remote viewing classified stuff. And, and I was, we were all just literally tasked on something that was likely classified yeah. and we were being, being harassed, like even death threats by intelligence, but at the same time asked to do things. Now on the other side of this, so after that happened, not long after this guy that we worked with who was in an in intelligence uh, agency, he said, he came to us and he said something along the lines of, hey, something happened. There are these scientists that may have done something really bad. And I can't tell you what it is because it's classified. John, when have scientists not done something really bad? That's the question. <laughs> exactly. Right. And I want to know what it is and if it really happened. So, so we remote viewed it. And, you know, you could task based off of that. You just task like what the scientists did. That's it. Right. And you're not privy to the higher conceptual explanation of what the project is. Well, and, and right? OK, this is let me just before you get to that, let me jump in and tell you what Preston Nichols explained in his book, because what you saw is different than that. And I think this is really important because the remote viewing story <laughs> makes much more sense to me than Preston's recounting Preston. of what happened. And yeah. you have to understand with Preston Nichols, if that happened the way that he said it is, which I like for the most part, I think it is, there's still a lot of things with him and his personal understanding that that were, I think, somewhat impacted by the by the project itself. Right. Like the forgetfulness, the almost the MK Ultra part of the entire thing that that right. had kind of taken place with it, right? But what he said happened is that that the 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 psychic there had pre that they had turned the machine on and they pumped it up all the way the psychic is attached to it that, right. that something from his sub subliminal mind like a beast from his sub you know subconscious basically manifests right? manifests and starts like basically creating destruction everywhere and then they just wiped out like basically the you know it, finally they shut it off the being the the beast disappears and and the entire thing kind of like right gets scrapped but that's not really what happened is it not i mean could not according to the remote aspect? viewing yeah according to the remote viewing so so we looked at it you know this guy's request we literally just do a task and what did the scientists do? And and so we got in our data a, a bunch of scientists who were just very egotistical and full of themselves, full of hubris, whatever you want to call it. And they were doing something because they could. A lot of the data was like actually getting angry with the scientists. Like the viewers were just like, and I viewed on it too, like, these scientists, they're just, they're, they shouldn't be doing this. They shouldn't be doing this. What they did is they figured out how to open a doorway to another dimension. But it wasn't just opening a doorway. It was permanent. It was, it was like, like, okay, now you've got a solid interaction point and merging of two dimensions, right? It was more than a doorway. It like brought an area together where, okay, let's just say as a czar dimension, there's another dimension they're like this or you know they're not they're they're separated from each other they come together <laughs> and now there's a an area where it's all commingled yeah so right? it, instead of it being a door where you're going from one place to another it was sort of like a Venn diagram where they were there you go laughing it's the old vesica pisces <laughs> right <laughs> so so that's that's what we got and because of that it irrevocably changed our dimension and this other dimension. And with this other dimension, there were beings, creature-ish type beings that shouldn't be mixing with ours. They need to be separate. And this is stuff in the data. It's like, it was so adamant with the viewers, like these need to be separate and these damn scientists mixed it all together and, and you can't pull it apart again. Weirdly lines up with the storyline of Stranger Things. Like right. Exactly. To the nth degree, right? Exactly. I mean, exactly. we've got psychics, we've got, we've got like beasts from other dimensions, like right. all kinds of weird stuff, right? Exactly. And so, you know, we we get all this, we get all the data get together, we we give him the the bullet points based off the correlative points. We give him even all those sessions, and he's like, "Okay, thanks. Yeah, thought this is what happened. Bye. Click." And we're just like. We're like shaking with PTSD. Wondering gonna what's going like, to happen next. You know? guys like, uh -huh, yeah, okay. are we safe? <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thought so. Yeah. Just, just making sure we're doomed. Just making sure we're doomed. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's like, that. like, like these, these, these people that we worked with never, ever, ever like sat down and had tea time. It's like, you know, oh yeah, that, you know, that whole interdimensional beast thing, it's still going on. And, you know, you guys helped us a lot and this is what it's doing now. It's rampaging through New York city uh, under the surface. You know what I mean? It wasn't ever like that. <laughs> Yeah, no dude, tea time. That's so close to New York City. I mean, you know, right. That is insane. And and you know, and and really, like, if you talk to people at Montauk now, I mean, they talk about strange things that have washed up on the beach. You can find some photos of that. Um, right. Weird things going on with birds during the time of of Montauk, um, and just a, a, a whole slew of things that 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 area experienced. Um, you know, related to simple frequencies being transmitted and technologies that we don't really understand. Right, right. And they're still doing it. I mean, they're still doing it just in different locations. I think once they spend a location, they move somewhere else, you know? And so, yeah, did they really rip a hole into the upside down is the question, you know? <laughs> and then, so, and what normally happens is, you know, honestly, what I think it is, like after doing a bunch of research on this, I think when they start one operation, they they let it run for a little while the technology like improves a lot then they scrap the entire thing and they move the technology somewhere else yeah. right and then they start experimenting again with a new set of uh like and probably could be more than one project that branches off from that where they're experimenting with different things right um you know i believe harp was one of the experiments that they moved on to um high frequency um you know oh uh, yeah all of that like the research program yeah <clears throat> um and then, uh, you know, I believe CERN to be one of these. Um, CERN is now there's a lot of really scary things about CERN. Um, and, and there are some details. Now, well, we were just talking about, about those scary things. <laughs> yeah, the, well, we were just talking about how the Montauk Project had created an unnatural portal somewhere. Right. We're talking right now about the world's biggest machine. I think they're building a bigger one right now somewhere, but the world's biggest machine that's literally the biggest rail gun ever built. Now, a rail gun is like an actual weapon that you can use to blast plasma and blow, like basically it's a destructive um, weapon. Now, they're not calling it a rail gun, of course. They're calling right. it, um, uh, you know, a particle accelerator. Right. It, but with the particle accelerator, they are, you know, smashing atoms into one another, creating black holes. Black holes themselves are considered to be portals. We don't understand them entirely. But what's really weird is the particular place that CERN was created. The circular mm -hmm. tunnel system, I think it is, how many miles is it? It's something like, is it 17 miles or something like that? It's huge. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's huge. So the CERN itself was built kind of below a, a old temple of Apollo, which in ancient times was considered to be right. a portal to the underworld or well, the, the portal somewhere. You know, that's, that's the weird thing. It's like, you know, did they choose this location based off of portal mythology? I mean... Why, why else would you do it, though? Is that like, really, is that like, can that be a coincidence? I I don't I mean, OK, so like, look at look at look. I mean, we're going into the natural thing here for just a moment. But look at like um, the Uinta Basin Skinwalker Ranch. That whole thing, when we remote viewed that is like a black hole, like where there's it's right. like a black hole, white hole situation where there's energy shooting out and energy sucking in back yeah. and forth, back and forth. So that's like a natural portal location. What happens if you build a super collider there? Could it have been like that over there? Well, right? Yeah. Are they doing that? I mean, that whole they area is it. like totally walled oh, off. Heck. So anyway. check. So I used to live when I was living in San Francisco and I would drive through San Jose uh, on this one freeway. Every time I drove, there was this weird thing that went under the freeway. I would look at it went under the freeway. It was like this track in a ditch that went into this like uh, bunker thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is that? And so I finally looked it up and the university there has set up a um, super collider that runs underground and under the freeway. That's so literally. dangerous. Like, 
So think about this. I believe that there are classified super colliders that are way bigger than CERN. Oh, bigger. Way bigger. For and sure. look at that. It's like people are sitting on top of a super, super collider in the Bay Area and they have no idea about it. It's the nut. It's the nuttiest thing. It's insane. Yeah. Now, now listen to this. Okay. So regarding that temple to Apollo, I found a, uh, an article on RT.com and number five is CERN's curious choice of geographic location. It says now on top of all the speculation as to what CERN scientists are really attempting to do with their large Hadron Collider, many observers cannot help but notice that the town in France where CERN is partially situated is called Saint Genus Poli. Excuse my French, literally. The name Poli comes from the Latin Apollicum, and it is believed that in Roman times a temple existed in honor of Apollo, and the people who lived there believed that it is a gateway to the underworld. It is interesting to note that CERN is built on the same spot. Now, listen to this. Religious leaders always suspicious of the aims of the scientific world drew a, a connection to a verse straight out of Revelations, which makes reference to the name Apollyon. The wow. verse states, to him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and they had a kind over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But wow. in the Greek tongue, half his name is Apollyon. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. That's really crazy. Yeah. So it's like when, you know, <sighs> there's got to be a correlation there. Well, this is what I'm saying. It's like uh, sometimes it's like with the with the stuff that scientists do or like, you know, it's like this idea that we were just talking about with CERN and where it is, is exactly the same conversation we could have about its logo. Right. Like, why is CERN's logo made up of three sixes? Right. Like, are they doing it to make fun of us Are they, or to make fun of people? Are they doing it, you know, are, are, is, are they really innocent and they just kind of made this thing up and it's supposed right. to be a super collider? Like, why would you, right. why would you do that? You know, and then, and Dom was just yeah. showing the, 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 um, the statue that they the have Shiva. In, Shiva. In, yeah, of Shiva, which is, you know, in some form doing the dance of death. death. Yeah. To destroy the world. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, there's a big circle around Shiva. It's like, is that certain? Yeah. Like, you know, the, this right. is and they they had like very strange, yeah. There it is. The the go. you know, the three sixes. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, that's weird. It's just strange. Yeah. I mean, we you know, we looked at some CERN cern things the thing with cern is that it's like you have to the way you task on it's like you can't task on individual things because there's so much that's going on there people rent time scientists rent time at cern right and so so a lot of the stuff you know probably will never make it into publications you won't know about it um you don't know who's renting time there people will wait years before they can get into cern probably as well to to use that super collider there was one instance though where we saw that there was an opening and someone had disappeared into it but it was so brief so fast such a brief flash um but i you know it makes me wonder like how much weird nefarious stuff actually goes on there or if it's just like this sort of flag waving look over here look over here look over here while we are doing the really messed up stuff in africa or something or, or we yeah, got like and, and to me it sort of seems like if if cern is getting this much attention that there must be something bigger somewhere else that's kind of what i why think. is it so public like it's, right. why is it so it's public? sort of like the the nasa of particle accelerators exactly like, like Na what's nasa doing really I you know, know i know I know. I know. Exactly. That's kind of what I think about it. I just I I'm just not 100 percent convinced CERN is the evil portal making machine. Well, I mean, certainly I mean, it might be. Know. It can be. I mean, they're they're blasting particles into one another at like beyond light speed. Right. There's nothing like there's nothing great about cern there's no point like think about the billions of dollars that have been funneled into cern and what information right. has it given us back that's going to actually like help the world right yeah i, I don't get it i don't i don't i mean i don't think that i think 
I don't think that CERN is doing the stuff ultimately that the elites are going to escape through. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that that kind of stuff, the real deep, strange things are probably occurring in the, in the classified super colliders. Oh, it has to be. That are, that are probably dotted around Africa where they can get away with it and hide this stuff. But think about it too. I mean, how many people actually know about the super collider in San Francisco that is, is running underneath their community? I mean, they don't. It's not something talked about. So what's going on there too? Is it just for mm. students? Fun stuff for students to do? Let's, you know, smash some particles. I don't know. I but wonder if that is hide. I wonder if that particle accelerator is accelerating the um the the destruction of the San Francisco area in general because that area is really pretty awful now. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it's not it's not a fun place to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the stuff around CERN and you know like if you get into and you start reading the 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 like scientific documents and people that are going to CERN right. and and articles and different things, you find that the entire CERN culture is just a bizarre thing. Like there's something called CERN sickness. Like when you really? show up, yeah, when you show up at CERN, like everybody gets like ill. It's a certain type of illness, like a nauseous like illness that takes time to like actually uh, like overcome. And Either. yeah, it's just strange. Like why it's like a vibrational sickness? That? Well, and what is it? Radiation? Like, shouldn't you be worried right. about that? Like there's obviously or is it just like the general field is so negative that you come in there and your body gets all whacked out? You know, what is right, it? right, right, this right. Is bizarre. That's weird. Okay, actually, that's something to put on my list of things to turn sickness. Yeah, yeah, I can actually send you. Yeah, send that. I can send try to find this. Like, I I know like, I was looking at it and reading about it myself, and because it was like some guy who was just geeking out over CERN and he was talking about it, and I was just like, what? Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Why is everybody looking overlooking that point? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there there's a there's a few other things that that we got to talk about here. Um. One is uh, Mount Vesuvius. All right, what's going on there? Because so I don't know of, anything about it. Yeah, so this is sort of like way more of an opposite situation than, than CERN, which is like, you know, a man-made machine that's causing some type of particular portal right. to be there, right? Mount Vesuvius, you know where Mount Vesuvius is? It's in, it's in, it's in Italy, and it, really? caused, yep, it caused the destruction of Pompeii, you know, uh, ages ago. Now, this particular area um, near Vesuvius is thought to be a portal to hell. And now, um, in the area around um, Mount Vesuvius, this is where it gets really interesting. Have you ever looked closely at the Sistine Chapel? No, I haven't. Okay, so the Sistine Chapel, um, Michelangelo uh, painted six specific sibyls on the walls of this or on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Now, sibyls are are um, prophets or prophetesses, right. you know, women who who are psychics and um, probably the most known and the most interesting of those prophets is a prophet uh, or a prophetess called the Cumaean Sibyl. Now, this woman was said to live in an area around Mount Vesuvius for about a thousand years and that she was cursed by Apollo for refusing his advances. So Apollo had made some advances. She kind of like tricked him, but he, you know, that, that never works that way. You know, right. when you when you trick when you try to trick one of these uh, Greek gods, like you always like get doomed. So I think it was something like yeah, he you promised do. her a long life if she would, you know, mate with him or something. Right. He like said she would and then refused. And then she let her like the agreement was that she could live forever. So she after she was granted to, to be able to live forever, he, he just let her live forever. But she would age. So she just kept getting older and more funky. And, and you know, but she lived for like a thousand years. I think I've heard of this story. Okay, now yeah. around the Mount Vesuvius area in the in in the like around the Phlegraean fields, there's this thing called the tunnels at Baie. And they they found the, like okay, in the 19 I think it was like 1950s or something like that. They uh they start they found 
these tunnels. And it was reportedly the place that this Cumaean Sibyl most likely lived. And so these, these archaeologists started going in there. And I think it got delayed. Like maybe they might have even found it earlier, like during some of the wars. And then later on um, started to excavate a little bit. They removed all of the rubble. There was a bunch of rubble, rubble in, these, um, in these tunnels and eventually got to a place where there was like a boiling river and a landing for a boat. What does that sound like? No, 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 dude, what does that sound like? It's the river sticks, bro. That's the river sticks. Now, now, you know, of course, the scientific explanation for this is there was a bunch of rituals held down there and uh, they would recount the blah, blah, blah. But we have right. two other stories from history that say that that at least actually there's three that I found. But there's two major stories from history that call that specific area the uh, gateway to the underworld. And one of them is a story recounting the Cumaean Sibyl bringing Ayanas, I think his name is, down yeah. into the underworld to visit his father. And he he enters there through the river Styx, bro. That's <laughs> like, crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. And then the other story that we have is Hercules actually fought the uh, Cerberus, the three-headed hound of hell, in that area as one of his labors. Wow. What was the three-headed hound of hell doing in that area if not to protect a portal to the underworld? That is like like full on like 1970s claymation going on in yeah. my head. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's bizarre. And there are other areas like very strange like that area, that whole area has very strange things. Now, one of the weird things that I found is in almost every single case where I could find a portal, whether it be St. Patrick's Purgatory, Mount Vesuvius, Hoska Castle, whatever, yeah, we're going to go into a couple of those, too. There's always this smell of sulfur in the air. Right. Is the smell that they describe in the Bible of hell. Right. Right. Weird, right? Well, well, I mean, OK, so what could this be? So is this a dimensional construct, a dimensional portal? Um, I mean, how do you have a boat on fire or a boat that's sitting on a on a river of fire? Right. <laughs> how does that work? Is it is it? I mean, I'm just thinking out loud because I have not remote viewed this stuff. To me, like where, where I start to go is like towards inner earth, towards inner earth civilizations, cultures, and and entrance points, you know, that are that go straight to some kind of civilization well, underground. And, and sort of like that door we talked about in the first episode, where was that? And that carved into that. Um, Aramu Muru. Aramu Muru, yeah. Right. So it, it's like, you know, now it just looks like a stone that looks like a door. And, you know, are you really going to enter into there? I don't know. Like maybe right. this is a similar situation where there's like a, a chemical reaction that happens if the circumstances right. are right. And maybe you can enter. I don't know. Maybe you can right. enter. Right, 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 right. So what are these places? Because there are other myths of these types of locations. Literally. So, so what are they? Where, where are they going? Why do people have these? What was the initial experience? Like, what do you experience if you go there? If you go to Huska Castle, Castle or whatever it is, what is the experience of, of, of going through it? Is it going through a portal? Is it? Well, there is a story a about that. Into inner earth. Yeah, there is a story about that, actually. And for those of you at home that don't know, Hoska Castle is probably one of the weirdest places. Like, this is the real life Mel's Hole. So where the story, I believe, from Mel's Hole came from is Hoska Castle. Yeah. And 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 the idea, like, what basically the story recounts right. is that there was th this hole in this kingdom. I cannot remember the king's name off the top of my head, but there's a hole in this kingdom, and there's all of these reports that there are things flying out of this hole in the area, right. like flying things like, and we're talking about like demons or something, right? Right. And everybody in the area is getting so freaked out over this that the king at the time builds a castle that has like no kitchen, like nothing that you would need to actually live in this area. It's literally a cork to plug a hole. And there is a story that um, at the time after the castle was built, they, they wanted to find out what was down the hole. So some of the guys who were in prison that had been given life sentences said, hey, we will reduce your sentence or release you if you allow us to 
try a rope to you and uh, and 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 lower you down in there, and you tell us what you see. And so, of course, they're like, "Well, I'm just going to be in prison if not, right?" Right. So they agree to it. One of the guys, they start dropping down there. They get down to the bottom, and they just start hearing blood curdling screams from the guy, and they pull him up really quick. And the story is that he had aged 30 years. His hair was now white, and he was like. He had been down there, like if it was a portal, maybe maybe there's a different time space in that portal. I don't right. know, but crazy, right. like he had right. seen hell. Right, right. Yeah, or experienced it. Right, right. That's one that um, that I just started to task with remote viewing, getting together taskings on that with remote viewing. Yeah, because why not? Because why not? I mean, <laughs> yeah. So that, that one is weird because... Um, so far on the preliminary data side, I think it might be older. I think it might be older than originally thought. <clears throat> and there's definitely, like, I'm trying to piece the data together now. There's definitely a huge energetic component that is going on there. Like, remote viewers, like, we literally just task on, you know, describe the reason why it's built. Descri describe the reason why this, this structure was built. This castle. That makes sense, yeah. And, and, you know, you're going to get the basic stuff. So right. at first, there is information on it being built as for economic commerce or around the area. So this, when they, when, when they said they built this in, I think it was uh, 13. Yeah, it was the 1300s. 1300s, something like that. Something yeah. like that. Um, not much was going on there as far as I know, historically. But sure. if you get back to like nine BC or nine, 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 what, it, what was it? 9,000, the year 9,000, not the 1300, nine year 9,000. That time period could have had something different going on there, but something happens. So I think originally so far, what I'm seeing is they built it for one reason, but something happened. There could have been some construct of an earthquake something started to break apart to the foundation that it was on and an energy started coming through because because at first it's like it's built for a normal reason many many years earlier and then something happens there and some gateway opens up and and the data starts talking about like like um something huge energetically happens like like a nuclear uh fusion or explosion type situation and now there's this emanation of a great amount of energy coming from it right so you're not going to get that kind of stuff unless that kind of stuff actually is happening mm. right it just is not going to show up in the data it's not going to show up so so that's my first foray simple quick touch into it and i'm i'm waiting on more data around it to correlate to try to understand it a bit deeper i mean when you look at the picture, it could have been that um, there was some outlying city like uh, around the year 9000 BC that, you know, whatever they built it. But this this structure is weird, though. It's a weird structure. Like, it doesn't a... make sense. No, the way it's built. Yeah. Um, so so I'm trying to piece that part together. I think the structure itself. The outlying structures could have been for more village commerce type stuff. Sure. But that structure they built when that energy started emanating. Right. So it could be that the remote viewing data is grouping structures together at the moment. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, okay. There's a we're 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 getting closer to uh, to time here. But have you heard of Saint Patrick's Purgatory, John? No, I have not heard of that. What is? <laughs> St. Patrick's Purgatory. Okay, so you know St. Patrick, he he kind of was a pilgrim. Right. He was he was kind of, you know, pilgrimaging, you know, east into uh into Europe and he was he was, you know, um trying to turn people from from their pagan ways into becoming Christians right. and and um you know, he 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 got over to Ireland. And, you know, he's just finding it very, very challenging to um, to help the Irish turn over into um, into Christians. And so he, he prays to God and he asks God for help uh, to, to help turn these people from from paganism to Christianity. And um, he receives a message to go to a certain place. 
and he goes to this place and he full on sees in this place purgatory. And so he just starts bringing groups of people to this place and showing them purgatory and helping them believe that it exists. And then they're right. all turning over into, into Christians after that. Wow. And, and the, so then this place was plugged or there was like a door put on it. Right. Um, and like, I think it was the 1300s. It was something like, don't quote me on this, but it was like maybe 1320, something like that. And, um, and it, and it hasn't been open since the monk, the monks of the area guarded, but the area was said to, you know, it's said to everybody believes that if you go to this area and you open those doors that you will see purgatory. And, um, and, and what's weird is the area smells like, like sulfur again. So what did they see? What did they see? Yeah. What did I they see? So, is this, so is this a picture of the purgatory? Like this is where the hole is? Um, you know, I'm not, I remember this a little bit differently, but I, I imagine if Dom is finding this, this must be where it is. Well, unless, you know, we're in the Mandela effect and. <laughs> Which is know. always a possibility. Actually, we always a possibility on that. <laughs> yeah, pretty soon, actually. We yeah. We need yeah. to get into that a little bit. Yeah, we do. That's weird. So, so that's actually, um, that's interesting. You got to wonder what they saw and. I mean, is this the same stuff uh, as the sticks kind of river of fire yeah. seeing, you know, through a, a portal into another world? Are they looking through a portal into another world or are they literally looking into inner earth? Like what's going on? Fire, brimstone. I think you kind know of if you were looking. Yeah, but, you know, if you see fire and brimstone, you're th probably thinking there it is. This is um, St. Patrick's purgatory here. Um, you know, I, I just think like if you're, if you're seeing, so um, they sealed it up. Yeah. They, there's been, yeah, totally sealed up by the monks in there and they, and they kind of guard it. I guess you could say what's weird is that like you, you have this idea, ancient cultures, like ancient cultures have this idea that, that hell is something that is a physical location in the earth. I mean, this lines up with with, you know, that the, the Christian ideology of hell being the physical location. And it just, you know, we sit upon it and we can either go there or we can go to heaven. It's underground or it's up in the sky. Right. So so that's a really curious thing. And like you have to wonder. I mean, that fits into a construct that doesn't enter into me in a sense. Right. That kind of construct doesn't work in my brain, because when I think of higher dimensional realms or lower dimensional realms. I think of dimensional realms. I don't necessarily think of, I'm going to look at a hole in the ground. Hey, look at all those devils and demons flying around that fire down there and that hole in the ground, you know, well, like true. But it, you know, if you look at it that way though, there could be, there could be some really like cesspooly dimensional spaces of just like, you know, awful, like you have to fall somewhere, right? <laughs> if, yeah. If you're, if you become, if you become trash, you probably are resonating more with a realm like that. And maybe you go there. I don't know. Right? I know. I know. I have no idea. Or maybe, you know, he gave him a bunch of mushrooms and he just started saying really weird <laughs> things to, well, to them. And they're like, Oh my God, you're right. Hell's right there. I'll tell you what though. There is a really interesting story that I found um, during the cold war about, uh, you know, there was a, there was a big, measuring act between the United States and, and the Soviets. They were both trying to measure whose was bigger. Right. And one of the things that they were doing is seeing who could drill the deepest hole. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so the communists drilled like this hole so point, in some area. It was like they had drilled a hole and, 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 you know, the, the drill stops working. It's just turning and nothing's happening. Right. So they, they pull the drill up, they drop audio equipment down the hole and uh they they re they're recording and they pull the audio equipment up and it's like screaming like humans screaming and one of the communists at the time said i'm communist i don't believe in god now i believe in god right because yeah right exactly and now right. you know i looked into this i tried yeah, to, go to confirm this or 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 like debunk it and it was like the conclusion i came to is like it's impossible to tell because 
because you have people on the like on basically like the the scientific side of things that will deny anything that's like that. Right. And then you have people on on the other side of it that will confirm any of it, even if it's not true. And and then you get like you get like these Snopes articles written about stuff that like, right. well, you know, it's just like fact checking. Like, what? how can you really tell? Like, it kind of is right. up to you, you know? Right. Well, it's, that's it's I mean, OK, so how do you get around the science part? We'll just call them another dimension. <laughs> Right? Yeah. What's another dimension. It's, it's a portal. It's a, theory. it's a portal. It's a portal. Dude. <laughs> oh, it's exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh man, and we we kind of ran out. There's like a there's a few more now. Like one thing I'll mention is um, you know, in, in some of these we could just do full full episodes on, but there is said to be an entrance in in Tibet, you know, like uh like portals. Um in well in the, yeah, we talked about that. The Rorks were trying yeah. to find the place to Shambhala till they realized, oh wait. It's not a physical location. This is a vibrational location. And yeah. Like, uh, all right. We can't get there. See you later. Yeah. Man, like, yeah, well, man, you could dig a hole. If you could dig a hole to hell, where else can you dig a hole to? Shambhala? I mean, come on. It's so weird to oh, me. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it's not hell. Yeah. <laughs> man. Oh gosh, and in in man, there's a there's a few here that we we haven't even been able to get to, but um, we're we're running out of time right now. Um, yeah, this was a really fun episode. Yeah, it was a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, you guys at home, um, definitely go back and listen to episode one if you haven't. Uh, we we covered a bunch of different uh, locations on Earth that are considered to be portals, which we're still trying to discover what those are ourselves, or where they lead. Um, and hopefully we don't get lost in one, but, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and, um, John, yeah, always a lot of fun having these yeah. conversations with you and going through the data. It's good times. Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. All right. Well, you guys, uh, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you all so much for being with us. Um, yeah. And, uh, we'll see you guys next time on metaphysical. Bye. Bye.